Hello, bright and shiny beacons of light. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. I am beyond excited for tonight's event. I have a feeling we are all in for magic. And by that, I mean, well, I'll tell you about the channeling and stuff in just a few minutes. First off, Margo Estrada, thank you so much for your kind donation. How does it get any better than this? And for everyone, let's get in our heart space for a little bit. How's that? And we'll, we'll take a deep breath in, let it out. <sighs> in through the nose. Uh, one more time, in. Uh, the technique I've been teaching is you actually take a silvery thread or a golden thread from the heavens and you bring it down into your heart. So let's have you go up, grab a golden thread, we'll say tonight from the heavens, bring it down into your heart. I fill my heart with light and love. I fill my heart with light and love. I fill my heart with light and love. Ah, now we're getting into the heart space. Now we're getting into the good stuff. All right, so I want to give you a little behind the scenes movie magic of how this takes place. So Jessica, my wife, my everything, the producer of Inspire Nation, um, or actually we would say, I guess, executive producer at this point. Um, we were sitting down last, about a week ago, and we're talking about what tonight's event would be. And we have a list of topics that she's come up with. And we go over many of the topics. And all of a sudden, I have my hand down on my leg. My knee comes up and pinches my finger between the table and my quad. And I go, ow, ow, ow. And her first response was, what was the last topic you just read? And it was this topic here tonight. Our angels and guides love to get our attention and can have kind of a funny, twisted sense of humor maybe, way of doing things depending on how you respond. <laughs> and so that little pinch of my fingers or finger told me that this was the topic to teach about tonight. What's so cool about any topic that I teach about, and somebody had mentioned in the chat earlier this evening, is Michael going to be chat uh, channeling? Here's how it goes down. And here's also in a similar way how it goes down for a School of Mystics class on Wednesday nights. And if you like this, you love the School of Mystics, is I have a topic before me and I go into automatic writing uh, the morning of or two mornings in advance. And, in, and that's a technique. I don't, I'm not going to go over it at this moment, but that's a technique that I teach. And so I go into automatic writing in the morning, in this case, this morning. And I write down angels, guides, light workers. I'm going to be talking tonight about why your guides chose you. And <laughs> I'm laughing I'm almost giddy with excitement. I got, usually for a show, I have about 20, or for a, a YouTube live, I have about 20 talking points. Last week was stunning, and I managed to get through 48 talking points without overwhelming anybody, I believe. I stopped tonight at over 100 this actually, we're going to do this as two events. We'll do this tonight, channeling uh, uh, the first part. I don't want to call it parts. It'll be your, it's your own unique lesson. But next week, we're going to dive into the boardroom and angels and guides. It's going to be really, really cool about how you can access the boardroom, learn from the boardroom. It'll be special. But when I went into automatic writing this morning, I got this, I guess you can call it angel dump or guide dump. It's probably a better way to put it. That was monumentally huge, just beyond anything that I expected. So with that said, let's dive into stuff here tonight. The, oh, so uh, the question was, do I channel? So I channel each morning before an event. And then I also do some channeling. They'll come and chase me down with information during an event and when I answer questions as well. 
So this morning, they told me that where I got to start tonight is real briefly about my NDEs. And I've had two NDEs or two near-death experiences, which kind of accelerated my path as a modern mystic. You're a modern mystic too, if you're listening to this, or you're a mystic in training. We're going to help you to get from being here in this physical rigidity to here and the other side of the veil at the same time. Uh, that's everything that we teach in the School of Mystics is how to get you living on both sides of the veil at once. So our guides, let's bring it home, why your guides chose you. Our guides aren't just protecting us, but they're guiding us each step of the way and they can literally keep you alive. And this is one thing, my second near-death experience, I'm broken and bleeding out internally in a creek bed um, outside of Lake Tahoe, actually where the fires went through a few weeks ago. And I'm interested to hear if the fires got to the exact location where I had my second near-death experience. I'm bleeding out internally. By the time the uh, rescue workers get there, there is no blood pressure on me. I'm freaking out. Actually, no, change that. I wasn't freaking out. They were freaking out myself. I had this beaming ear to ear grin. I'd been given an opportunity to stay or to go. I'd been breathing in this most amazing light and sending out love in light, out love. Okay, there's no blood pressure on me. But I was happy as a clam. And I don't know how happy a clam is. Maybe I was much happier than a clam. No blood pressure in all. And what I'm told despite the fact that there was no way that I should have survived, is that my guides and angels have told me there was no way I wasn't going to survive. That they were going to keep me alive no matter what. As long as I made that choice, that decision to live. And we get to reaffirm that choice each day. It's called waking up, wake up. Go to the angels, go to the guides, go to your heart. Fill yourself with light and love. Give this huge thanks, give a woohoo. If that's your energy, it doesn't have to be. We reaffirm that choice for life each and every day. So I had made that choice. The angels and guides helped me to live. And they said they did so because I'm on a sacred mission. And they wanted to help me to complete my sacred mission. But I got to be honest with you. You're on the same sacred mission as well, that's why you're attracted to my energy. That's why I'm attracted to your energy. Because if you came here tonight, which you obviously did, you're a light worker. You're here for a sacred mission. You are a mystic in training. We get to bring this out of you. But you are here for a sacred mission. And so there are many layers to our life experience here in this earth school. One of those layers, maybe his mom, his dad, his grandmother, his grandfather, his co-worker, his sister, his brother. That may be one of our, his inventor, entrepreneur, cleaner, all beautiful. That may be one layer of why we're here. So we call that layer the evolution of the soul. One layer that you have is the evolution of the soul or for your particular spirit mission. And I put spirit in quotes because we are all interwoven in this unity fabric of one. We're all interwoven in this unity fabric of one. And so we appear, we're on this giant rose bush, and we each appear to be our own unique flower. That's your spirit mission. However, Oh, well, that's true. Certain specific events will happen during this mission, during this lifetime, to help you to fulfill your spirit mission, your spirit path. But there are different layers. So there's the layer of you that has your own individual journey in this earth school. You're here to learn, you're here to grow, you're here to experience, you're here to love, you're here to heal. But there are many layers. There's the you mission, and there is the we mission. 
And so you are on a global mission to do those same, very, very same things, tongue tied tonight, to help heal the planet, heal humanity, heal the heart of all for unity, for oneness, for love, and for ascension. There's ascension arising upwards of the individual spirit. And there is the ascension or rising upwards of all of humanity spiraling upwards. And you play an integral piece role in this. That's why you're here now, 2021. What a rocking, crazy, awesome year. A year that we've come unmoored. What happens when a boat comes unmoored? It can sail out to sea. It can explore. So on one level, we look at this year and we go, oh my God. Oh my God. On another level, for the evolution of humanity. Woohoo. Wow, how does it get any better than this? We're coming loose so that we can spiral upwards. So now let's bring this back to your guides and why your guides have chosen you. Because it's really quite cool. So there are all different types of guides and angels for that matter. But there are guides and angels, and I'm using that somewhat synonymously. Angels have their own unique role. Angels, you could say, are in a sense closer to source, closer to spirit. But angels and guides work hand in hand. It's not, well, I'm better than you. There is no better than. Just like on a schoolyard with a school bully, there is no better than. Just as in any corporation, CEO to janitor, there is no better than. We just are. But there are guides who have been with you since the beginning of time. You're infinite. I want to say get used to it. You're infinite. It's so awesome. New soul, old soul, who's been on earth school the longest. That's a different story. But you are infinite. You are divine. And you have had guides with you, at least one, probably many, since the beginning of time. And these guides are not limited to your guardian angel. So, guardian angel... Guardian angel, if we want to talk about different angels and guides, guardian angel, it's a fun way to think about it, is like a bouncer. <laughs> I met a bouncer at a club in uh, Vegas. He was from Chicago 20, 30 years ago. His name was Bubbles. I'm Bubbles. He was this big guy. He was like 300, 350 pounds. He could snap your spine by going like this. Hey, I'm Bubbles. Your guardian angel is like Bubbles. <laughs> but much more, depending on how you choose to relate to them. But they have been with you. Your guardian angel has been with you since the beginning of time, and other guides have been with you. Specifically, you have a master guide. You have a master guide who has been with you since the beginning of time. This master guide, and on rare occasions, depending on your mission, but this master guide has been with you since the beginning of time and coordinates all other guides. And in a sense, angels as well. They've got the clipboard. They understand what's going on. They're the master planner. They're the master coordinator. They help pull on the strings. So you've got your earth school lesson, and that's a new lesson plan each time you come in here, a new soul path, and your master guide is here to guide you through it and also to call in other guides and angels to help you on your journey. The master guy can also look at their clipboard and see your greater mission, both throughout lifetimes 
and what you're here to do this lifetime for all of humanity. And she, he, they goes by whatever. It's a balanced masculine, feminine, call it whichever you wish. Your master guide will call in just who you need for the evolution of humanity as well. So again, you have your individual soul purpose. Your master guide calls in guides to you for that. Both guides for many lifetimes and guides for this specific lifetime. But you also have the evolution of humanity or the evolution of the whole or consciousness as a whole. And your master guide calls in angels and guides for that because there are multiple missions you're here for this lifetime. And this is a cool concept to understand because we really trip up on the idea that I have one sole purpose and that if I didn't start a business, have a family, uh, save the world, uh, start the newspaper, whatever, that I failed. And we have been taught that in this doing society, that if I do not, I am not. Nothing could be further from the truth. Your soul path, your soul mission is extremely rarely about a specific doing as much as a specific being. Learn how to be in your heart. Learn how to be with others. Learn how to be with family. Learn how to be with your wound until it is no more. So that's your individual soul path. And you can't do wrong on it. And yes, a lot of angels and guides come in to help you. We're going to be talking more about that in a minute. But you can do no wrong. This is like the hardest thing for any of us to get. So I went over to our beautiful RV this evening. And prep for this took much longer than expected. All good, all perfect. And I look around and it looks like a little bit of a whirlwind <laughs> came through. And I'm laughing because I'm going, ah, it's all perfect. It's all good. So if your life looks like a little bit of a whirlwind took place, it's all good. Tap your heart. It's all good. It's all perfect. It's all good. It's all perfect. It's all good. It's all perfect. This is your job to be in your heart. Now, as for your greater mission, just your very beingness here affects that. And oftentimes we don't see what it is. It's the 10 people, the 100 people, the 100,000 people that you bumped into this lifetime that you're helping elevate consciousness. You're helping shift humanity and you don't even realize it. You realize it when you begin to heal your wounds, which is awesome. But you often don't realize the role that you play in healing the wounds of the entire planet, which you're doing. So I want you to give yourself a better, a bigger pat on the back. Because you are love. You came from love. You couldn't be anything other than love. That's why you're surrounded by angels and guides for your personal mission and for your larger sacred mission. So no, let's bring this back to the guides. And I'm going to do a little bit of Q&A here because the guides gave me so much information that I was challenging on this. So we have this master guide. And I asked, is there a master guide for our master guide? No. <laughs> there are other high-level guards, guides to help us on our global project as versus the individual project. And each of these guides has their own unique skill, but the master guide is the top of the heap. So you can have guides underneath it to help you on your personal project. There can be a guide underneath them for helping you to up-level consciousness or up-level humanity. You can have a guide for helping consciousness become more compassionate, a guide, even a guide for your guides. So there are many guides here to help you. So if I look around this room and I can very rarely actually see angels, it's happened a couple times. It happened last week live. I don't actually see them now. It happened the week before. I'm like, guys, are you here? 
I know they're here. Your room is packed with angels and guides right now. There are guides to help you on your individual path. There are guides to help you on the collective. Again, going back, what's the difference between angels and guides? Less than you think. It really depends on their closeness to source, closeness to spirit, and what are their own unique super skills. And so you have countless angels and countless guides by your side. And it depends on their super skills, whether it's an angel or a guide. So the big question is, does it matter? No, you can actually refer to them as the team. And I'm going to dive into the team a little bit here tonight, but this is where we're going to really blow things out next week. So the big question, if I've got angels, if I've got guides, if I've got a master guide kind of working like a CEO, do I have a boardroom? Yes. Yes, you do. You have a boardroom of angels and guides. One way you can think about it, if you've watched a movie and there's a TV producer and that TV producer gets together, let's say it's for a morning show, gets together each morning and go, okay, what story do you have? All right, you hit the beat. What story do you have? All right, call that person. What story do you have? What story do you have? And that TV producer kind of pulls the whole thing together and brings the whole group together. That's what your master guide is doing each and every day. And here's the important thing. We're going to dive more into this next week. Is that you can participate in this meeting as well. This is the mind blower. Is that you have all these angels and guides who get around this giant table each morning. With your higher self as well, admittedly. What's your higher self? Well, there's you that's residing in this limited body, this amazing body. Your body is amazing. It's got a heartbeat. It's amazing. Trust me on this one. It's all you need to know. It's got a heartbeat. It's amazing. Amazing. But there's you that's residing within this finite body. There is you that is everywhere. That's your higher self. And one of the places that your higher level self is residing is at the boardroom table each day, all day, but particularly for the meeting. And so you can go to this meeting each day and work with your team to plan out the day, to plan out the week, the month, the year, and for the rest of your life. I talk a lot about how, in a sense, everything happens for a reason. And I juxtapose that, contrast that you could say, with angels and guides that help us on our path. So the question becomes, is there one path? Is there free will? Is there not? And yes, there is actually two types of free will, or three, you could say. There's your free will. There's the free will of the collective. And then there's the combination of free wills that is interwoven. What does that mean? Well, if you have one path of my soul path is I'm supposed to walk down the street and go 10 city blocks today, and then there's a collective path, which is there's going to be a giant protest in front of you <laughs> while you're walking down the street, your paths get interwoven. And so it is a very tricky job for your guides to help you on your soul mission, the individual and the collective, at the same time handling all the changes that are coming our way. So you do have free will, but it is completely interwoven. And no, your future is not fully known. There's a propensity, sort of like in quantum mechanics, we get an idea of which slit the ball is going to go through, so to speak. But we don't know with certainty. We can stack the deck in your favor. That's why thing, things where a manifestation, law of attraction, and all of these things do have validity to it. We can stack the deck in your favor if it's for your highest good and the highest good of all. But we cannot with 100% certainty know the outcome. That's because free will comes into place. 
that's actually really important because you have guides here this lifetime to help you to learn, to help you to grow, to help you on your journey. But if the outcome was predetermined, they don't need to help. They're out of a job. You don't need to do anything. You're out of a job. And you have guides to help you with everything. You have guides to help you go down the street. You have guides to help you eat your breakfast or at least the digestion part of it. You have guides for everything. Do realize this is your boardroom. You can call them in. I went into prayer with Jessica just before we did this show here tonight. And I was calling in my guides for YouTube live streams, for shows, for helping you. You can call in your guides right now that help you to learn, to take in information or to expand and evolve from this talk, even beyond this talk. So you can call in these guides, but they don't know the future. You don't know the future because you wouldn't then be expanding and growing. Now, I actually challenged this concept when I was channeling earlier today. And I said, well, but time's not real. And in a sense, all time is happening simultaneously. So if all time is happening simultaneously, angels and guides, then isn't it reasonable to assume you know what's going to happen to me? And their answer was no. It is stacked. It is layered, but it is continuously changing. And so the limited and the co and the limited and the infinite can coexist simultaneously, ever changing. They said, but for the fashion or for the understanding from a point of view of growth, linear fashion is best. So. We begin to understand we have a master guide. And the question was, how does having a master guide change our world? How does having a master guide change your world? Hi, master guide. Whoo, ooga booga, by my side, I can feel him. Or her. It's a very, very balanced energy that is both powerful doing and powerful being, yin and yang, balanced between each other perfectly at a much higher level. You can begin to interact with your master guide. You can begin to talk with your master guide. So Lao Tzu has been coming through loud and clear for me over the last few weeks. Lao Tzu means... Uh, also in Chinese, I won't pronounce it quite right, Lao Tzu means old master. And he's the writer of the Tao, which is this ancient, amazing text. Can't recommend reading it enough. It's only 81 or so verses, very short. Full days read or broke it up into maybe four days. Or you could do 10 verses a day, take you eight days. And I've been channeling Lao Tzu for our School of Mystics class. And and I'm sure Allie can put in the link there, School of Mystics class, four Wednesdays a month. Completely awesome. With that said, he's been coming through the, loud, the last few weeks loud and clear, and he's a very advanced master. However, he is a master guide for some, but he is not my master guide. So, there are different, very high level guides who will continue to come in and out of your life, depending on where you're at, depending on what your mission is. And I have a mission right now that as we speak, we're crossing the 200,000 mark on YouTube. We've been as high as number one on iTunes uh, for the spiritual category and spiritual self-help. How does it get any better than this? Highly recommend checking out the podcast. But I'm told I'm here to do really big things. And so I have a very, very, very high level master guide. Chances are, if you're listening to this, you do too. And Lao Tzu, as high as he is, isn't the highest. And so there are different level guides. Now, in human terms, we want to rate everybody. Well, you're a level guide five and 
Well, I've only got a level guide seven. You've got a level guide three. Craziness. There is no such thing. Just as there's no such thing as different levels of humanity. We're all beautiful spirit. You're awesome. You, you, you are awesome. Bank account doesn't determine level. Your position in life doesn't determine level. You're close to spirit. You're close to God. You're made of the same stuff. You are spirit. You are God. With that said, we each have our own unique role and we each have our own unit, unique experiences and amount of experiences during the earth school. And so there are different levels of guides, but no one is higher in a sense than another, though they may be higher in responsibility at the time. And so the higher level responsibility you have this lifetime the higher level are your guides. Again, no better, no worse. I asked a few questions at this point while I was channeling this morning. I said, are guides former humans? Got a no. Are they former angels? That was interesting. I got a no such thing. An angel is an angel. And I said, was an angel a human? And it goes, not in the sense that you think, dear one. So, we can go to our master guides. We can go to the boardroom. We can go and find out why we're here. We can take a more active participatory role in our lives. Let's talk about a few more things. Then we're going to go into uh, a Q&A on this. There are levels of guides, just as we talked about. And you can begin to call them in by name. Many will begin to identify themselves. And you can certainly, you can write to them in automatic writing. Can't recommend that enough. You can talk to them before you go to sleep and see what answers they bring you in your sleep. You can go out in the woods and begin talking to your guides. In fact, I can't recommend it enough. Develop a relationship. I get to develop a really deep relationship with my master guide. I get to spend lots and lots and lots of time in the boardroom. Now, in automatic writing, I knew that there was a boardroom. It's something I talk about in automatic writing. It's something that um, uh, Napoleon Hill talks about in Think and Grow Rich. And it's a lot less of a linear text than you think. When you read it through a couple of times, you're like, wow, this guy had it going on. But this boardroom goes beyond the known. It goes beyond calling in a few archangels. It goes beyond calling in um, somebody who's appeared by your side in a dream. You have this massive boardroom. And in there are guides you can call in by name or simply refer to as guides. Each guide has its own unique task and purpose. From the most mundane, I was surprised to hear, you have a pencil sharpening guide. If you actually still even use one of those, you have a pencil sharpening guide. And then you have the most substantial, you have a change of the world guide. So what's a guide? A guide is infinite. A guide is divine. They're working through their own karma, their own learnings, their own life experiences. In other words, a guide is just like you, in a sense, on the other side of the veil, yet working here on their own soul path. How does it get any better than this? We're going to earth school. Your guide is going to you school, you are their mission. You are what they get to learn about this time or to learn about themselves and how they interact with you. You're their world. Yes, even though it is so rare until now. I hope this talk tonight rocks your world because your guys are going let us in see there's a prime directive among angels and guides 
couple prime directives. First off, thou shalt not harm. Secondly, we can't interact until you ask us to. So you've got from a pencil sharpening guide, a world changing guide, a help you digest your food guide, a help you to hold an amazing talk guide, a help me with my relationship and marriage guide, a bring in the babies guide, a whomever guide, drive the car safely down the road guide. You've got a guide for everything. But we're not calling them in. So how much can they learn on their life journey when they're kind of sitting on the sidelines and I can hear the song going, put me in coach, I'm ready to play today. <laughs> and they're sitting on the sidelines. You've got guides who want to help, who want to help you take your life to the next level. Put me in coach, I'm ready to play <laughs> today. We're not calling on them. They're infinite. They're divine. They're working through their own karma, their own learnings, their own life experiences, and they are exceptionally loyal. They will do anything they can to help you. Period. Done deal. End of story. If we will ask. If we don't ask. Our guides can't do almost anything. They will do their best to interject subtly, but they cannot do anything gross. And I'm not talking about, you know, week old jello, Ooh, month old jello, jello that's rolling away, crawling away. They're not that kind of gross, but they can't interfere, but they also can't harm. They shall never harm you. This is a key point. So I learned after my second near-death experience that spirit had knocked me down in order to bring me up. So was that angels that hurt me? Nope. Prime directive, can't do it. Was it guides that hurt me? Nope. Prime directive, can't do it. It was my higher spirit, my higher soul, my higher self that said, you got a two by four? Whap! Do I have your attention, Michael? Aye, aye, Captain. No, I don't get upset with my higher self. Woohoo! I love, love who I am now. I want you to get to the same level of love. This isn't the egoic, I'm so great, love. Though we all get to do that about ourselves. This is recognizing that I, that you, that all of us are the divine. You are the divine, ready to cry. You, you are the divine. You're the greatest soul and spirit to have ever lived on this planet, ever, of ever, of ever, of ever, of ever. You matter. You really, really matter. I wasn't recognizing that. And I was going into a <laughs> do or drive <laughs> scenario. Not do or die, do or drive. Go, go, go. Do, do, do. Don't experience life. Put the metal to the pedal. And my spirit said, we've got so many beautiful things we get to do this lifetime. First off, healing your heart. That's completely off track here. Let me pull out a two by four and just kind of use it as a crowbar and bend you into, snap you maybe, into a different direction. Crack your heart open. Thank you, spirit. Thank you. But that's my own higher self. Never will that be an angel. Never will that be a guide. It is only you helping you. So going back to what angels and guides can do, no angel can directly and no guy can directly intercede unless called upon or dire circumstances. However, your guides are always behind the scenes 
setting the table. We talked about with angels, and it goes the same with guides, the three S's, sign, symbol, synchronicities. Sign, symbol, synchronicities. And, and if, if you just come here, at the end, we're going to do a meditation to call in our guides. So hang in there till the end. We're going to do a meditation. So sign, symbols, and synchronicities. You're driving down the road. You're not sure how in the world you're going to organize this whole complex thing that you've got going on. And this happened with me in Palm Springs this winter. And you see a giant billboard that says, you've got this. That's your guides. You keep going and you round a bend at some point and there's a license plate. It says, go get them. That's your guides. Lights turn green. Out of, all of a sudden, paths open where once there were traffic. That is your guides helping get you into a state of flow, making it easier for you. They're working behind the scenes to, step, uh, to set the table. We get to still put our foot on the accelerator or on the brake. We get to still turn to that opening, take that turn, a door closes, we get to choose another. But they are there doing everything they can in their power behind the scenes. Everything in their power. Until, here's where it gets really interesting. Here's what I'm so excited about here tonight. Kid in a candy store. This is where it gets real interesting. Once we begin calling on our guides, and interacting at a higher level with our guides, we go from a three-dimensional existence, flat, I'm here, this is life, to a fifth dimension, a five-dimensional existence, simply by calling in our guides. That's all it takes. I want to go from 3D to 5D. Call in your guides. I want to be able to see with my third eye all in your guys. And there's a lot more to it. We've been teaching this in our, in our school of mystics. Come join us on Wednesday. But you have a guide that will help you to see the mystical. You have a guide who will help you to see on the other side of the veil. You have a guide that will help bring you up to the upper rune and begin looking down on this life to understand it. There are guides for your individual journey. There are guides for the collective. There are guides to help you each step of the way. And when you take a more participatory role by calling in the guides, they will help you on a daily basis. So let's, let's go over the basics of where we're going tonight. And next week, we're going to really dive into this boardroom of angels and guides. All right. First. There are guides for your individual journey. There are guides for your collective journey. We can know them by name, but we don't have to. If we ask them, they may reveal themselves or reveal their name. I'm Bob. Who knows? How do you contact them? Start talking with them. Start writing to them. Start inviting them into your lives. Get crazy with this. Talk to Bob on the chair next to you. Get up in the morning and say, hi, master guide. What do I need to know today? Build a personal relationship or something I talked about a couple months ago on a YouTube Live again de event. Develop a communion with them. What's a communion with your angel or guide? This goes beyond communication, which today is actually a lost art, L-O-L. -L. It's a lost art, communication. How are you? And that's even with a R and a U. We've forgotten how to communicate. Have a rich, deep talk with your angels and guides, with your master guide. Share. How am I doing? I'm scared out of my mind. I've got this going on. I've got that going on. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Can you help me? That's communion, particularly listening. I got that dink. I think that's the way of guide saying, we're here. 
communion is talking over the deep things with your guides and listening. So we get to make a more communic. How do we put this? Make life a co-creative process with your guides. Understand many of your guides have been with you since the beginning of time and many more come in for where you're at and many more come in still for what you're doing right now. So you can call in guides. I love the Blues Brothers. As a kid, I loved that movie. As an adult, I got away from it. And now as somebody who loves the blues and loves incredible music, I am blown away by Aykroyd, by John Belushi, by that entire band. In the movie, Jake and Elwood, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd are being chased by the police. They're trying to get money uh, uh, to save an orphanage. And they're being chased uh, and they have to pay taxes to save the orphanage. They're driving down the road. The police are chasing them. And at one point, Dan Aykroyd says, Our Lady of Blessed Acceleration, don't fail me now. And he steps on the gas. The car accelerates and flies over some police cars. And for that scene, at least gets away. Our Lady of Blessed Acceleration, don't fail me now. It was a prayer to his angels and guides. We can do that. Our Lady of Blessed Acceleration, help me with the car. Our, Our Lady... And, and, and I don't mean to use that term. Guide who, who helps me make a great breakfast for my kids when I'm in a really big hurry. <laughs> Please help me now. We can call in guides. You get to work and you find out there's this new project that you're heading. Then you have no idea what to do. Call in a, a guide of projects, a guide of project management, or a guide of advertising, or a guide of promotions. Whatever guides you want, guides are coming in and out of your life continuously in flux, depending on what you need. So call them in. If you're on a healing journey, if you've just gotten news from the doctor, call in a healing guide. If you've got more month left at the end of your money, call in a money guide. Now, there are big picture missions as well, and those guides tend to already be here. So start to call them in as well. It's interesting, a few last things, then I wanna dive into some questions. The biggest missions you pre-selected before you got here. So whatever my largest mission is here in life, and right now it really seems to be working with you and working with hundreds of thousands of others. Those missions we selected before this lifetime on the other side of the veil. And so we got specific guides. That's why I'm grooving on talking with my master guide. We were given specific guides to help us through these missions. They are here. They're by your side. They're well waiting to help you on your mission. And we've got in a few years, we've got astronauts going to Mars. In a sense, they're going to have, in a very real sense, they may not know it, they're going to have guides going with them to fulfill their mission. Well, we have missions here right now, and there are guides here right now for these specific missions. So call them in. Now, what about in a really challenging situation? So tonight, there was a lot more to get done for going on the air. Cameras weren't quite set up, other things, all good stuff. And I was not as grounded as I am now. I was in a loving, kind place, but I was as jittery as somebody who's never had coffee, who just had 10 cups of espresso, Cuban espresso for that matter. Do my guides get stressed out? No. But what they do have is a sense of urgency. And so my guides are in a sense pumping me up with espresso to help me to get things done or to get ready or so that I can then enunciate to you. 
So guides don't get stressed. They don't freak out. They do have an energy about them. And the energy can certainly overwhelm us, particularly if you have something important to do. So what you want to do is recognize this energy may not be coming from me. This energy may not be coming from me. And then go back to your guides and say, hey, guides, can you help me ground and get centered? Can you help me to ground and get centered? So we'll do a meditation, calling in our guides at the end. I want to take some questions now from people. I want you to understand you have guides for just about everything. They're special. They're sacred because you are special and you are sacred. And that the more you develop a special sacred relationship with your guides, the more everything, truly everything begins to change. So with that said, I want to open it up to questions. Please do come join us for our School of Mystics course this Wednesday, four Wednesdays a month as we dive even deeper into this. Right now, we've been playing around with Lao Tzu. We've been playing around with the Tao, which is this amazing mystical Eastern technique, helping you to become a mystic, helping you see with your third eye and see from the other side of the veil and taking concepts like you see here tonight and breaking them out at a much deeper level and giving you exercises. I don't wanna overwhelm you here tonight, but very specific exercises to help you dive way down the rabbit hole so you can become the mystic you were meant to be. And we have this amazing group. We all get together. We're all loved. We're all supported. I'm sure people are in the chat room who are myths, mystics in training can share just how special the energy is. So come join us this Wednesday. And last but not least, this has been one of the top angels and spirit guides in the book, in the world, this book, Awe, the Automatic Writing Experience, for I don't know how many weeks now, and it just came out as an audio book, but we have a live class where I'm going to teach you how to channel the angels, how to channel your guides, and that live class will be 10 nights from now. How does it get any better than this? So it'll be a week from Thursday. And Allie, one of my dream team members, will put in the chat, first she's putting down uh, how to join the School of Mystics, and she'll also be putting down there how you can sign up for our online course and begin learning automatic writing today, which includes our class coming up a week from Thursday. So let's go to questions here. And oh my gosh, I've got a lot of people to thank first. How does it get any better than this? Chelsea, who donated $9.99. Thank you so much. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? Thank you so much, Chelsea. Metaphysical Mike, who donated $5. And, oh my gosh, I would love and grateful to do a collaboration with you on YouTube and using joy and happiness to heal our inner child. How does it get any better than this, Michael? Mike, for that matter. Um, love to hear more and sending all my love your way. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you so much, Mike. Lori Brind Brindisi, who donated $20. How does it get any better than this? Oh, all my love, Lori. All my love, all my love. And Mary, Mary, who's done it again. Thank you so much, Mary, for your kind donation for $20. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? Thank you so much, Mary. And let's open up the questions with Mary. Mary Fryer, do we choose our guides? If we are part of the divine, which I know we are, and we choose to, whoa, question disappeared, and we choose to come in the, the, and experience the human life, do we also not choose our guides? Just curious how, we, how that works. We choose some of our guides, Mary. So we're on the other side of the veil and we can go, you know, I'd, I'd like uh, Sir Lancelot. I'd like Robin Hood. We get to choose some of our guides. Some will also step up to the plate. But then when we're here, because we have this veil of amnesia, you can say, we call all in guides, but not a specific, like, oh, I know Bob from the other side of the veil. Bob, I need your help now. 
not quite how it works. Now, if somebody, Mary, comes to you in a dream, you could say you get to call them in. They're already here. What you get to do is reestablish that relationship with them. If somebody visits you on the other side of the veil, if somebody visits you in your sleep, they're already called in. Your higher self called them in, you could say, before this lifetime or during this lifetime, your higher self spirit who's everywhere can see on the other side of the veil. You hear a little bit of a limited sense. So we can't choose Bob or Julie or Mary. But on the other side, for some of them, we get to. On the other side, there's some, though, who say, I'm going to step forward for this mission. You're exactly who you, I'm exactly who you need. Brilliant question, Mary. Margo Estrada. Uh, I would love to know, and thank you so much, Margo, for, I believe you made a donation. Thank you. How does it get any better than this? Actually, I know you did. How does it get any better than this? Thank you, Margo. I would love to know why my spirit guide chose me if I am a chosen one. Well, absolutely, Margo. Absolutely. We all came in here for our individual mission and for our collective mission. And so in that sense, many, many, many guides chose you. Understand, a guide is, well, in a sense, you in disguise. It is spirit, soul on the other side of the veil with their own soul path, soul journey. There is no one nothing that is not expanding and growing. Sorts itself, consciousness itself, continuously expanding and growing. And so you have spirit guides on the other side who said, hmm, pick me, pick me. I want to work with Margot. I'm exactly who she needs. And they're right. And so they're here with you. They chose you. So this concept, Margot, and my heart is hurting as I'm saying this. And so we really, I'm hearing, I'm feeling pins and needles. So Margo, we go to work on your heart. Oh my gosh, do we get to work on your heart. I want you to love yourself up so much more, Margo. We have all forgotten, have collective amnesia to how special we are, how unique we are, how much we, you, Margo, and all of us, but you, Margo, matter. That's why your spirit guides chose you, because you do matter. And if all you do, Margo, this lifetime is learn how to heal your heart, which would be awesome, because it's a frequency game, as you heal your heart and your vibration goes up, Margo, you begin to heal the heart and soul of humanity. So really that right now is part of your greatest individual soul path that will also help the collective soul path as well. So lots and lots of love and hug, Margo. Maria Teresa, how do I address my accumulated subconscious patterns so I don't get stuck in a loop and continue repeating them? This is a brilliant question, Maria. And it is 50% of this one, Maria, is awareness. It is recognizing our subconscious patterns. That's half of it. The other half of it, or at least a part of it, is let's do some clearing work. That's something, School of Mystics, we did some clearing work last week. We'll do clearing work because of all the requests, probably once a month, maybe more than that. Um, do some clearing work so that we can start to get rid of these subconscious patterns. There's some great techniques out there to name a few EFT, emotional freedom technique, tapping. You may have heard it. Uh, Dr. Bradley Nelson's emotion code. Uh, many great shaman out there have soul retrieval work. And, and I have my own alchemy that I do that, that I use with my coaching clients who are specifically here in the school of mystics, but start to clear away those patterns. And then once they become conscious, Look for what you can replace them with. A subconscious pattern that has become conscious is now ready for eradication. So you have a pattern of arguing with somebody, maybe arguing your pattern. First off, since we're talking about guides, let's go tonight 
and say, I'm going to call in my guide who helps me with interpersonal relationships. I'm going to call in my guide who helps me to ferret out and remove subconscious patterns. All right, this pattern is conscious. Guide, please help me to replace this pattern with something positive. Every time my partner does X, Y, Z that drives me insane, I'm going to link this to remembering how precious they are. Every time that I go and pick on myself for X, Y, or Z, I'm going to link this with remembering how precious and special I am or remembering that I was once this little innocent baby and that is still me on the inside. So we make things conscious, we call in assistance, we clear what we can, and then we link and replace. That's where I would go, Maria. And a couple more brilliant donations. So Alex Salinas, thank you for your donation. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? Thank you so much, Alex. Giant, giant, giant hugs, high fives. Thank you so much, my brother. Catherine, thank you so much for your kind donation as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? Brian Nichols, how can I find out why my guides chose me? So Brian, I'm going to give you the informal methods and the formal, my favorite method, informal. Ask your guides before you go to sleep. Ask for a sign, ask for it to be made clear as day or ask for them to visit you in your sleep. Another way. Go sit by a tree. I had years ago when we lived in New Jersey, there was at the center of this town called Florham Park. Somebody had hammered in eyebrows and a nose. I don't remember what they did for a mouth on this tree. Called it the speech <laughs> tree spirit. And I would go walk to this park even before as Jessica and I were recovering from life events, even before I had a car that I could use, I would walk to this tree and I would sit by the tree and talk to the tree spirit. And over time, I would hear, and it wasn't make-believe. It wasn't this booming voice, but you begin to hear. You develop this relationship, Brian, so you could do that. Formally, I would come join us for our class in a week and a half. Uh, Allie will put the link down below. That's one of our dream team members. Sign up for our video-based program, Learn Automatic Writing. You can be learning it tonight. Come join us for a live class in 10 days from now. And each morning, you can be diving in, communicating with spirits, an individual spirit your ma uh, um, or an individual guide, your master spirit, your master guide. You can be communicating and having this dialogue with them. The dialogue that I got today, if I was to break it out in a book, two or three chapters, 20 or 30 pages, much of it information that I didn't know, much of it too information that I had an intuitive inkling about but was never spelled out before me. But you begin practicing automatic writing, which is in a sense, you go into a meditative state, you put pen to paper, and your guides start writing through you. You want to talk about becoming a mystic. It completely transforms your life. It is a lifelong practice where you get accelerated learnings and accelerated learnings and accelerated learnings. And you see the whole world from the eyes of a mystic. That's why I have the school of mystics. You see the whole world from a different perspective. So that's ultimately what I would recommend, Brian. Brandy Lee. Hi, Brandy Lee. How do we know when we get new guides, possible signs and synchronicities? Brandy Lee, if you were to start a new job tomorrow, you would get a new guide. There is an energy you can feel about it. You go in, first off, you have butterflies, but there's a crispness, there's a newness. Rest assured, like a fresh breeze or breath of fresh air, a new guide or guides has come in. You're going to be driving halfway across the country to start something new. You're going to get new guides. You've been just been given incredible news. Link to that news are guides. So yes, in a sense, if you're asking, are there signs and synchronicities? You can ask for signs and synchronicities that you'll get new guides. But for every new mission during this lifetime, they are there. Your job is to simply Ask 
for them to reveal themselves or to build that relationship or ask for that assistance. Arlene, what do angels look like? So Arlene, the ones that I have seen, and I in no means believe this is all the angels there are, have big, fat, heavy wings. These are not little light fairy wings. And they're, they're cherubs and other things as such. But the angels that I've seen have these huge, girthish, giant, white feathers, heavy wings. And they come in male form. They come in female form. They come in old. They come in young. They come in almost crotchety. <laughs> the angels that I've had around here over the last couple of weeks were like looking on like, hmm. It's very interesting. So that's not how I was picturing angels to be appearing before one of my talks. But to me, more important, when you see me do this, I'm getting a feather brush of the angels. More important than their look is what they feel like. Is when I say girth, I don't know if anybody has talked about this before. I'm sure many have. There's really nothing new under the sun. Where does the information come from? We receive it from somewhere else. Angels' wings, to me, are incredibly supportive. You can feel them holding you. They're strong. They're powerful. Yes, you get goosebumps or feather bumps. Feels like a brush of the angels or of a wing on your, your arms, but they're strong. These aren't lightweight wings at all. They do fold up by their size, but these are very powerful wings. And it is the feeling state of knowing your angels of there are knowing that your angels are supporting you. That's what's most important, Arlene. And you can certainly call them in. And I will bring in angels for us and help you feel that at the end in about mm, 10, 15 minutes when we go into a meditation. I'm going to try to, good, we've got to, we've got to stop on questions for the evening here. Um, oh, Yazzie just donated too. Thank you so much, Yazzie. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? And Yazzie's question, what can we do when you have a mission, but they've gone a bit quiet? Ooh, first off, call them in. Call your guides pack in. Secondly, Yazzie, a bigger picture question may be, have I lost my mission? Am I not doing enough? Am I not being enough? Am I where I'm supposed to be? Yes, you're where you're supposed to be. Yes, you're brilliantly on path. No, you're not stuck. No, there is no more that you need to do other than breathe and be. And I will add to that, call in the guides. Call them in. Whenever we feel stuck, whenever we feel we aren't moving forward, and the word that pops into my head, Yazi, is forsaken. Your guides will never forsake you. Your guides will never leave you they're here for a job, then they're going to head out and new guides are going to come in. But your guide is never going to, well, you just didn't get the job done. I'm out of here. Your guides are unconditional love and they're on their own soul path. So if a guide was to give up on you, it's not going to help their development. They don't do it. Part of their soul contract. They're not giving up on you ever. So call them back in, Yazzie. Kat, is there a video or series of Michael's origin story? How did he get here into this channel? It's a brilliant question, Kat. One that's been coming up more and more. There are a smattering of videos. Um, there may be a YouTube live from many years ago that has some of my story. But we get to figure out how to address that one one of these days, Kat. Um, I don't have, I have sections of books. There's my story in Awe, the Automatic Writing Experience. Uh, there's my story in some past books as well, but nothing that encompasses all of it to where I'm at today. Um, my wife, Jessica, and myself did found this channel six years ago and probably over 2,000 shows ago. How does it get any better than this? Um, and just tonight, I'm sure by the time I'm done, we broke 200,000 subscribers. Woohoo! Thank you, guys. 
Share, share, share. Tell everybody about it. Let's go through the next 200,000 even faster than the last until we are reaching millions of people here. And of course, we're on a podcast doing the same thing and on that same path. Um, so it's been just this beautiful journey. I have had a couple of near-death experiences and some other guidance with a two by four. But we'll leave that at that for tonight. I'm happy to talk more about it, but with all of the questions coming in. Um, let's see how many more we can get through. And then about 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, we get to dive into a meditation. Um, but thank you, Kat. Love you. And um, we'll, we will give this a think. Iron Empath. Greetings, everyone. I want to know, what about when you want to relinquish your will for God's will? Would God's source prefer we keep our free will and grow to want to use it as spirit would? It is a brilliant question, Iron Empath. What you're getting at is surrender versus free will. And it is one of, you, you know you're on a spiritual journey, uh, Iron Empath, when you realize that spirit means holding paradoxes, holding opposites in two hands and finding a way for them to coexist. So the paradox is we get to fully surrender this lifetime into um, flow, into this state where the doors begin to open, into our greater mission. We get to surrender into that. And we have free will at the same time as to how much we want to surrender, A, and B, our likes, which are actually still part of the surrendering. In other words, you came in here knowing, in a sense, whether you're like chocolate vanilla, uh, chocolate chip ice cream, cookie dough ice cream, or dairy or non-dairy. You came in here with these things. It's your free will to choose them. And nobody says, thy will, not mine. I will sacrifice my existence and be like St. Augustine, and I will be uh, without clothes, walking naked in 2021, and will never allow myself any ice cream. Probably get locked up. Actually, I tried the no ice cream thing many decades ago. I became allergic to dairy. I don't do any dairy now. I know there's a whole question about the health of dairy and stuff. But with that said, <laughs> you're allowed to like what you like. And Surrender to a higher good, but it's a two-step dance. Surrender does not mean non-action. St. Augustine surrendered, what a mystic, and still walked his path. That's what we get to understand, that surrender does not mean giving up. It means giving in, and when possible, giving over. And I hear there's no time where it's not possible. But then you still get to choose what you like and chop your own wood and carry your own water. It's kind of the paradox of this journey for our learning, for your highest good, for my highest good, for the highest good of all. A few more questions here. Arlene, so spirit guides can't help me change my path? Of course they can, Arlene. Well, okay. They can help you get into greater flow. If your learnings, Arlene, were for discovering more self-love and you say, I want a new path, your guides are going to still be there to support you learning more about self-love. That's your soul path this lifetime. But let's go to Michael's soul path. My soul path for my evolution and growth evolved, involved a lot of injuries early on for whatever reason for my expansion and growth. I renegotiated by understanding that I have angels and guides and going to them uh, along with past life regression and some other cool stuff and said, I'd like to make you a deal. I'm going to listen a lot more carefully can we come to an understanding where I can get the lessons without so much pain and suffering? And they said, yes. So that was a renegotiation 
of how the learnings would come to me. My path was still my path. Your learnings or your path is still going to be your path, but how you wish to get there can be with greater flow, Arlene, or what I call more of a kind, gentle, easy, good approach. All right. Uh, Metaphysical Mike, I'm going to jump ahead. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get back to you. I want to go to some people who haven't had a chance to ask questions yet, Um, but sending much, 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 much love your way. Um, Soul Spa University, um, Inspire Nation, is there a guide to help me be able to visually see my mom who passed and for me to handle it? Yes. So two things, Soul Spa University. First off, you can call in a guide to help you communicate with your mom. Absolutely. Secondly, learn a process like automatic writing. Do I mean to be saying automatic writing, automatic writing, automatic writing? It works. There are other processes, but I know automatic writing works. Learn a technique and start communicating her with her on the other side. She's in energetic form. I'm getting goosebumps by your side right now. You don't even need to use automatic writing to start. You can go to her tonight before you go to sleep and ask her to give you a sign clear as day that she is there. She is there. The biggest challenge is we have too much self-doubt to believe that she's actually speaking to us. Blossom. So guides and higher selves are not the same. This is true, Blossom. There is you. There is your spirit of you, which is your higher self. And then there are guides. Guides are not your higher self. Your higher self are not your guides. Your higher self can help you on your journey, but it's actually the higher self's journey as well. But the higher self are not your guides. Lizzie, ah, my brother is dying. Will his guides welcome him when he crosses over? So Lizzie, Yes, 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 yes. And by this, I mean, there are many guests we've had on the show. You can go through and you can hear. um, uh, I'm not going to be able to come up with the name of at least one of the gentlemen, a doctor in upstate New York who's been on the show, um, who talks about words of the dying and about experiences the dying go through. But guides show up. Guides have shown up and will continue to show up before your brother has died, comforting him, letting him know he's going to be all right. And his family on the other side will show up as well to help, in a sense, walk him across the bridge. I don't believe anybody goes it fully alone. And particularly the slower the dying process, the more that guides can queue up to help them across the veil, to help them across the bridge. When you see somebody staring off into space, when you hear somebody saying nonsensical things or what appears to be gibberish, they're talking and seeing, they're talking with and seeing their guides. So Lizzie, know that your brother is not alone. Know that he truly is in good hands couple last questions, then we're going to dive into a meditation here. And and Mike, you made a donation earlier. I want to get to your second question. Uh, what is the best way to clear and erase old negative thoughts, feelings, beliefs from your past lifetimes and Akashic records? Thank you. So metaphysical Mike, we can certainly do past life regression work and we do clearing work to remove some of these energetic patterns. And, and I think this is very beneficial for us. However, there's no need, the concept when I hear to clear from past lifetimes and Akashic records, what I hear is actually a discussion on karma, which is if I did bad things, put that in quotes, bad things in the past, am I stuck? Am I miserable? Am I not set free until I clear all of those things this lifetime? Yes and no. No, you're not stuck. No, you're not punished. No, you're not going to be, you know, roasting in the blazes of heck here on earth because of what you did in the past. Yes, you will be given lessons and opportunities to learn and grow beyond the decisions you made in the past. 
That's not a bad thing. That doesn't mean you're going to be hurt. That doesn't mean you're doomed this lifetime. And we don't have to worry about expunging our Akashic records. Like we need to you know, clear out the old criminal records from our past karma. No, because in the Akashic, in the Hall of Records, there is no judgment, only love. Michael, this is so important to understand. Michael, Mike, this is so important to understand. There is no judgment, only love. So this idea that maybe somebody was an ax murderer, maybe somebody was uh, killed, like Genghis Khan or somebody, thousands of people and they're coming back this lifetime. Are they doomed? No. That was the role they played to learn certain lessons. The role others played around them to learn certain lessons were in this cosmic dance together. And yes, there will be opportunities to learn how to choose peace this lifetime, how to choose compassion this lifetime, how to choose to dive into the heart this lifetime, but not of having done anything bad because this is a school. It is both incredibly real and it is not. We will go back, each and every one of us, especially you, but all of us will go to the other side, metaphysical Mike. And there we will be welcomed by our angels, by our guides, by our loved ones, by our soul group with only one thing, open arms and love. Okay, that's two things, love, no matter what because this was just the school that we learned from. Does this mean that we go crazy and we, we, we burn down the halls and stuff? No, no. This is about learning love at the highest, deepest level. And then we go back to remembering that we came from love. We are love. We couldn't be anything other than love. Uh, let's see, a few more questions. Let's see if I can get through them all. Uh, Lisa Love Animals. Thank you for your kind donation, Lisa Loves Animals. How does it get any better than this? Lucy, thank you for your kind donation. How does it get any better than this? Teresa, oh my gosh. Thank you for your kind donation. So much love, so much love, so much love. All right, we've got four last questions. Let's see if I can get through them in three minutes or less. Stacy, can you tell me how I can hear my guides? Talk to them right before going to bed and ask them, the number one question to ask your guys is can I hear from you and can you make it clearer than day or clear as day, clear as day, so that you wake up in the morning, have pen and paper handy, write down whatever comes to you. Does this always work? No, but it works more often than not. And you can ask for signs and symbols clear as day as well. Certainly a process like automatic writing helps, certainly Meditation, going quiet can help tremendously. It is so hard to hear from our guides when the radio station of life and in our head is blaring. Colleen, love you, Colleen. Why do we get to the point where we feel our guides have betrayed us? That is ego gone awry, Colleen. It's not our guides. Go back to the guides, lean on our guides. When we go, yeah, but this is going wrong and that is going wrong and this other thing didn't work out. That is all honestly part of the journey. And you go, but yeah, but why does the journey keep getting harder and harder? I thought I had this dialed. I thought I was on the right path. I thought I was, I thought I was, I thought I was. Strange expression. I use it almost every week, Colleen. Please forgive me. The beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> what in the world do you mean by that? What I mean is suffering is attachment to a story. Pain is a truck driving over your foot. Ow, big ow. Suffering is to say, why did it be that way? Why was I forsaken? Why did you do this to me? Why, why, why? Instead of just backing the truck off of your foot. So, so many things happen this lifetime that none of us want. But we're mortal beings this lifetime. We came in from a revolving door. We're going to go out through a revolving door. A lot of people are going to check out before us. A lot of us are going to have really substantial challenges because we're in this mortal body. 
That doesn't mean we've been forsaken. It doesn't mean we've been betrayed. It means we're on our journey. And so the best we can do is A, love up the journey and B, negotiate and say, all right, guys, how do we make this a more pleasurable experience? Because this is really tough on me now. Can you help me? That's where I would go. Can you help me? Last two questions. How do I stop Catherine? How do I stop being angry with my husband? He can really push my buttons. So Catherine, we get to go to love. We get to link buttons with love. This is such a high level learning, Catherine. So I would call in your guide of mediation, call in your guide of patience, call in your guide of no more button pushing. Get your team around and say, all right, guys, or girls, what can we do to flip this situation on its head so that when my husband pushes my buttons, I can learn the lesson and almost giggle from the experience, but I can treat this from a higher level, from a mystical perspective. I need your assistance. That's where I would start. That's a really short answer to a really profound question, Catherine. Lisa, last question of the evening. I should say, how do I find my soul family? Oh, actually, Lisa, you found them. We're here. We're in School of Mystics. We're in all of these events. We're in the chat room. Lean into it. If you join the School of Mystics, go join the Facebook group. Lean into it. Your friends, your homies are here. Can you find physical in-person ones in your town? Yes, absolutely. Start going to events like this. They're out there. So your toxic family choose to do things that don't involve them. Try or choose to spend more time with us or with a new group of us. Heck, go on meetup. Look for gatherings and get-togethers of your tribe. Call them in. Since we're talking about guides tonight, go to your guides and ask your guides. Guide of hmm, soul family guide. Soul family guide. Guy, can you help me call in my tribe? Can you be by me each side? I keep looking to my right because I feel my master guide is by my right. Can you help me to call in my tribe, to call in exactly who I need, to call in people so that I will not feel alone? And I'm also calling in my guide of healing toxic family relationships to help me to heal from this relationship. Um, Lisa wants me to read her super chat out loud. All right, Lisa, you got it. And so just want to say, I love you, Michael. Thank you for answering my question about finding my soul family. My family's toxic and don't have real friends. You do hear it. Lisa, you do, you do, you do. Can you feel it? It's energetic. Can you feel it, Lisa? Huge, 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 huge hug. We are all family. We are all in this together. And let's go from here and let's go into a meditation. Truth be told, I don't even know where I'm going to be guided to this meditation. So guide some glorious meditations. Please help guide me here. All right. Let's sit up nice and tall, but relaxed. It's, it's too late at night for people in the Northern Hemisphere to get too hung up about sitting up super tall. Relax. All right. Ah. Let's actually begin with a giant smile. You can actually take your fingers if you want <laughs> and help you curl up your mouth toward your ears. You can go up and down, up <laughs> and down, <laughs> up. It's directly connected to your laughing centers of your brain, up and down. <laughs> One more time, up and down. 
Now you can just come up into a gentle, gentle smile. How does it get any better than this? Breathe in through the nose, down to the belly, and out the nose. In and out. In and out. Now, as you continue to breathe in and out, I want you to recognize that this is your tribe. This is your soul family. It's no accident that we have each called each other here this evening. And so what I'd like you to do is imagine that everybody is in a giant circle right now and reach out and take the hand of the person to your right. Reach out and take the person to your left. And just feel that energetic connection as we breathe in together and out together. In together and out together. In and out. Now, as we keep holding hands, this giant circle of everybody watching this past, present, and future, I want you to recognize that we're surrounded by angels, surrounded by guides. And in fact, right immediately behind you is an angel, an angel who's spreading out her or his wings. Who? Ah. <sighs> Resting those wings around you, going over your shoulders, over your arms, draping you, holding you snug, letting you know you're secure, letting you know you're safe. And just feel the weight and the heft of those wings. Maybe you get tingles or goosebumps or chills or hair standing up on end. Thank you, angels, for being by our side. Thank you, angels, for having our back. Thank you, angels, for keeping us safe. Thank you, angels, for surrounding us with love. Thank you, angels. Thank you, angels. Thank you, angels. Now that we're in the sacred circle, I want you to think about a problem that's been weighing on your heart. It can be really small, it can be really large, whatever it is to you. And I'd like you to smile for a moment. Take a deep breath. Put your hands over your heart. and say, I call in the guide of, fill in the blank for whatever challenge it is, I call in the guide of, we finding an RV, <laughs> the guide of whatever it is, I call in the guide of blank. Please help me. Please come to me. Please give me your assistance. Breathe in and out. In and out. Keep those hands over your heart or even pat your heart. In and out. Thank you, guide, for helping me with this challenge. Thank you, guide, for coming in here tonight. Thank you, guide, for now and moving forward, for as long as I need you and beyond. 
for being by my side. Please guide, make me, make you and your services known to me. May you come to me and give me a sign as clear as day. And may you help me for my highest good and the highest good of all to and fill in whatever your challenge is. May you help me to for my highest good and the highest good of all. Thank you, guide. Thank you, guide. Thank you, guide. Mm -hmm. Breathe in and out. Breathe in your worries, fears, and concerns. Breathe them out and give them to your guide. In your worries, fears, and concerns. Out and send them to your guide. One more time. In. Super deep breath and. I release my concerns to you, guide. I release my concerns to you. I release my concerns to you. For my highest good and the highest good of all, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you feel the love? Can you feel the support? Can you feel how we're all in this together, which we are? So feel free to bask in this love and support as long as you'd like. We're gonna end this here now. I've gotta let my dream team get to sleep. We run a little bit long tonight. Come join us next week as we are going to help you connect with your boardroom. How does it get any better than this? Connect with the angels, connect with your guides. It is going to be a really sacred show next Sunday night or live event. We have Belinda Womack talking about Archangels, who's going to be up on Tuesday night. Oh my God, you're going to want to check out the channeling from Belinda Womack this Tuesday night on. Um, Hmm. answers from the archangels what's going on this lifetime and how will it end wow is that going to be a special one of course we've got our school of mystics class one wednesday night i would love to see you there how does it get any better than this how does it get any better than this? you want to talk about ohana or family and uh, connecting with your tribe come join us wednesday and then only a week and a half now. You can actually start learning it tonight. Get our video-based program on Awe, the automatic writing experience. You can be skin learning it tonight and you'll join us for our live class in 10 days and we'll have the link down as well. But I love you guys so, 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 so much. Thank you for spending the time here tonight. Thank you for your love. We can all feel this group. Thank you so much for your kind donations. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? I love you guys so, so much. Thank you, Allie. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Aya. Thank you, Jessica. Pookie, I love you. <laughs> Hannah, Miraku. Hannah and Miraku, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you to Bobic. Thank you, Nico. Thank you. Let's see. I think I've got Carol and Aya and Annis and uh, Liz and all of the members of our dream team. Thank you guys so much. And to all the angels and guys, love you guys so much. Ruru and uh, the kitties as well. And all of our guides and angels. Have a beautiful night, everybody. And keep on shining bright. Love you guys.
Uhuh.